Welcome to week six. Welcome to the final week of our course. So what is the topic for this week? Actually, it's libraries. So what are libraries? So far, your program has always been in just one file. However, software and programs tend to become very big and very complex. So it's better to put it in parts and to reuse functionality from one program within another program. Therefore, you need libraries. So again, these large programs become confusing and very hard to read. If you just have one file, you would start to copy and paste parts of the program from one file to another file. However, you have very much duplication of code, of, of code snippets, and this is very tricky to maintain this code afterwards. You will tend up to have different versions and in the end you won't have control of your programs anymore. Modularization splits up the code into pieces and puts each of these pieces in a separate file. However, to make use of these functionality within other files, you need some kind of concepts and these are libraries. It's showtime. Let's dig into our notebook like every week. Open your notebook and we we'll have a look on more details. So again, What's our motivation? Large programs in a single file quickly become confusing and difficult to maintain. Our programs so far just had a few lines. In reality, software consists of thousands, hundreds, thousands or millions lines of code. It's not possible to really squeeze it into one single file. And if uh, we always have to do it in one file, we, the reusing of uh, code becomes very tricky. You would have to copy and paste it from one file to another and this is really a bad habit. So what is to do? What we are aiming for is modularization and modularization is something what you have done or what you can see outside of software as well. Take for example a car. A car consists of many independent components or modules. This is why we talk about modularization. For example, a car has a chassis, it has an engine, it has batteries, wheels, an entertainment system and so on. And important, you can do modularization on several levels, that is, you can, for example, decompose the entertainment system and, and take subcomponents like a touch screen, like speakers, like a computer system and so on and so on. And what is the advantage of these modularization? First thing is, these modules can be created and tested independently. You can, for example, take this entertainment system, develop it outside of the car test it and only when it really works, plug it into the car. This entertainment system could be reused. Yeah? It could be used within another car. For example, you can develop one entertainment system and use it in different cars. Maybe your entertainment systems get broken. Then if it is modular, if it is component of its own, then you can really take it out of the system, of the car, and replace it by a new one. And you can do it not only if it uh, breaks, but you can even do it if you have a new version, a better version of your entertainment system. So having modules, having components makes systems more easy to maintain, makes, make, it makes them more robust. Why should we build software in modules? Software systems are among the most complex systems. We provide a link in here which lists simply the number of lines of code for certain software, like an operating system or like the uh, complete software within a car, something like that. And you can see simply by the number of lines of code that this software is really, really complex. 
So this is a very good argument to think about modules. Actually, we have used modularization already when we introduced functions. Each function has a clear task. Each function can be developed and tested independently from other functions. And each function provides an abstraction of the implementation details. So from the outside, you just look at the function name, at the parameters. If it is once programmed and implemented, you don't have to care about the details anymore. However, these functions so far could only be used within one program, not from one program to the next program. This is why we need this concept of libraries. Looking on libraries in Python, there are basically two different um, type of libraries. First, there is a Python standard library. This is a library you have already installed when you downloaded the original Python at the very beginning. Besides that, there is a Python ecosystem. There is thousands of Python developers who have programmed code and offer this code to others. And so you find lots of different libraries focusing on different aspects. Like for example, the SciP library provides functionality for mathematics, science and engineering. Whereas Flasks offers functionality for building web applications. Where can you find those libraries? Maybe one should be mentioned, namely the Python package index. This is basically a big repository, which makes it easy to install libraries, to find libraries, etc. We will provide examples for different libraries throughout this week. So this has been an introduction to libraries. We have not looked at the code yet, but you should understand right now why libraries are necessary if you really would like to do real programming.